Hey everybody, big shout out to Crunchyroll for making today's video possible, and they're offering a great deal now to Today in Nerd History fans. That's you at home or wherever you are. You can get 30 days of ad-free service by going to crunchyroll.com slash Today in Nerd History. You can watch more Naruto there, or you can watch Cowboy Bebop. They just added that to their library. It's the series that got me into anime. Probably you too. I, I think there's probably like a 95% chance and 5% of you got into it because, um, I don't know, Dragon Ball? Ah, let's start the show. Today in Nerd History! Naruto has way too many characters. I mean, they're all amazing, but there are like way too many. And some of them are so awesome, they get pushed off to the side just as they're getting good, or some of them just aren't utilized to their fullest potential. Here are five Naruto characters who don't get the credit that they deserve. Number five, Rock Lee. A definite fan favorite, Rock Lee is a character who showed so much promise before just being totally squandered. A character of strong determination, we watched Rock Lee slowly climb up the ranks in his quest to beat Neji and Sasuke. Rock Lee's determination to push his limits and improve himself is perfectly embodied in his fight with Gara, which ends up being maybe the best fight in the whole show, even if it comes at the cost of a broken arm and leg for Lee. Over time, Rock Lee also developed a great friendship with Naruto. At first, he doesn't give Naruto the time of day. After all, he's beneath him, he doesn't have time for that. But after Naruto beats Neji, Lee's able to see that this guy means business, and they develop what appears to be an important friendship. But when the Shippuden half of the series comes around, Rock Lee's pretty much completely pushed to the side in favor of focusing on Naruto and Sasuke. Rock Lee only had a few brief moments to shine, and he still raised a pretty healthy fan base. So it feels almost insulting that he just kind of disappears off the map. Number four, Anko Mitarashi. Loud and goofy, but serious when it's time to get down to business? Like me? <laughs> it's easy to see why Anko's another fan favorite. Like me. As one of Naruto's teachers, at first we can only assume that she's very talented, but it's not until the Chunin exams that we get to see how good she really is. When big bad Orochimaru shows up, we get to see Anko in full force. She'd been one of Orochimaru's pupils, which makes this fight pretty dramatic. Especially when she survives her fight with the powerful ninja and escapes to warn the third of Orochimaru's invasion and plan to capture Sasuke. She also has Orochimaru's cursed seal of heaven, the only survivor of 10 subjects Orochimaru tested it on. She's able to use this to help Sasuke understand and warn him of the effects of his cursed seal. With this awesome backstory and her great fighting capability, it's once again just a tremendous shame that the ball gets dropped and shifted. The series seems to be building to a big moment with Anko preparing to invade Kabuto's lair before she's captured, put under his power, and effectively does nothing for the rest of the series. Anko is another fan favorite who could have just been so much more. Number three, Kiranai Yuhi. Another teacher at Kono High Academy and one who's more often overlooked is Kurenai. Quiet, supportive, and understanding, Kurenai's roles are more behind the scenes, but they're still very important. And the most important of these roles may be getting her student Hinata to open up to Naruto, which lays very important groundwork for one of the most significant relationships in the series. And Kurenai's own relationships are important as well. She eventually has a child with Asuma, and this kid gives Naruto motivation to fight during the later part of the series. As a fighter, Kurenai has a lot to offer. One of the few people in the series who practices Genjutsu, her fight with Itachi is the only time we get to see her in full action, and one of the few times we get to see Genjutsu on Genjutsu, which is really cool! But after this, we don't really get anything good. Kurenai pretty much just drops off the map entirely. She might not be the most bold and colorful and exciting character, but her quiet dignity mixed with her crazy Genjutsu skills are definitely refreshing and worth noting. Number two, Asuma Surotobi. Asuma's got a lot going on. He's the love interest of Kurenai, he's the son of the third Hokage, he's a jonin at the school. Asuma's laid back with a wry sense of humor, but he helps Naruto learn race and shuriken, which goes on to become Naruto's most powerful move. He's also close with Shikamaru, and a lot of what he teaches to Shikimaru eventually gets passed down to Naruto. His contributions are pretty sizable. Despite all these things, he's killed off when the Akatsuki come to kidnap Naruto. He nearly succeeds in fending them off, but he dies in the process. We literally only get to see how good he is in the fight that leads to his death. While the other characters I've talked about have just been pushed off to the side, Asuma gets pushed into the grave, and we're just left wondering what other rad stuff we could have seen if he'd stuck around. And number one, heroes in Sarutobi. Okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking, but stick with me. I know that it seems difficult to justify this choice, but hold on. One of the most important characters, the third Hokage, considered to be the strongest of the third generation, the wise man, the powerful man, the pervy man. 
All through the first half of Naruto, Hiruzen gets what's due from his character. We see that he had a special relationship with Naruto's father before he died, and that he ended up filling a kind of fatherly role watching over Naruto in secret. We get to see him protect the village from the Ninetales attack in the flashback. Yeah, he seems pretty fleshed out and he's getting the screen time that he deserves. And then he dies. And don't get me wrong, that's okay too. From a dramatic storytelling point, sooner or later, Hiruzen had to die at the hands of Uruchimaru. It's not until Shippuden that we actually get to see how this character is completely disserviced. Along with the first, second, and fourth Hokage, Hiruzen is resurrected. However, unlike the first, second, and fourth Hokage, almost zero attention is paid towards Haruzen whatsoever. Okay, I get it, sure, spend some time with these other interesting characters, whatever. But give us just a little more time with Haruzen, please. Why go through all the trouble of bringing back this humongous character from the grave if you're just gonna hold him at arm's length and not do anything interesting with him? It's a tease, it's a shame, and it's a pain, but I'm just happy that he's back. Thanks for watching, guys, and another big thank you to Crunchyroll for making today's video possible. As a reminder, you can get 30 days of their ad-free service by going to crunchyroll.com slash todayinnerdhistory. And right now, it's an excellent time to get back into Naruto 